Welcome, my name is Kelly Anderson and this is Fanimated, the animation fan podcast where every week we get a chance to geek out about our favorite animated media. Today I'm joined by Jake Annis to explore the world and story of Samurai Jack, a Cartoon Network original series. Over five seasons, the story of Jack and his fight against a coup has won eight primetime Emmys as well as six Annie Awards. As always, spoiler warning for what's ahead, and without further ado, let's get started and let's get animated. Hey Jake, what's up? Hi. Not this. <laughs> this, this is what's up. <laughs> we are recording a podcast. Yep. What are we recording a podcast about We're today? We're going to talk Jake? about Samurai Jack. Yay! And you're the one who um, recommended this uh, for the podcast. Yeah, you you had sent me an email, uh, kind of talking about this whole thing before it was a thing, and you were like, like what, like these here's some topics that I'm interested in. Like, what about you? And I, there's like a few series that I was like super passionate about, like Samurai Jack and Invader Zim and some other stuff like that. So like, I said Samurai Jack, and you're like, what's that? And I was like, oh. <laughs> and yeah, so here we are. Yes, and I thank you so, so much for introducing me because I remember when I was younger um, seeing it on the TV. I watched a lot of TV when I was younger, mm -hmm. probably more than I should have, more than my parents wanted me to. Yeah. Um, but I definitely saw Samurai Jack um, on TV. I never watched a full episode, though. Well, it, was it was on really late, too, because it was a part, it was on Toonami on Cartoon Network. Oh, yeah, yeah. So it was that. always, like, after regular Cartoon Network was done. Right, right. And so I... And, and it didn't, like, appeal to me when yeah. I was younger. I was... Plus, I was more of a Nickelodeon girl growing up. I was, like, the Rugrats, SpongeBob, going into Avatar. Angry Danny Beavers. Phantom. Yeah. <laughs> 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 like, anything Nickelodeon I was watching. Cat Dog, yeah, all that. Cat Dog. Oh, gosh. <laughs> yep, yep. Sidebar, did you ever watch Megas XLR? It was no. the most ridiculous show. Here, here's what the was whole. It? Here's the whole premise. Guy finds like a giant, like like Gundam style fighting robot, like as big as a building, um, and it's missing its head where you normally like sit in the cockpit. So yeah. he installs his hot rod car as the cockpit. So his giant blue fighting robot has like a, a red hot rod sitting where the head should be <laughs> and he fights big monsters and robots and stuff. That's the whole, that's the whole show. That's the whole show. What network? network did it was it, Cartoon it, Network. It was Cartoon Network. But I, I, I Maybe remember, that's why because I was never watching Cartoon Network even though we had it as a channel. It just had such an awesome like opening scene mm -hmm. and the the last line before it started was um and it was it all had like like electric guitars in the background and it was like uh i dig giant robots you dig giant robots chicks dig giant robots nice and then it would start <laughs> <laughs> it was like such a great show but anyway samurai jack samurai jack yeah so i didn't watch it when i was younger um but i'm really really glad i uh went back to it now do you remember watching it when you were younger yes um i also I also remember that a lot of shows that I watched when I was younger had like a spooky episode because mm. that was one that I had mentioned to you because I don't think you saw it, but no. there it was um, Samurai Jack, the Jackie Chan Adventures show, um, mm. Shaolin Showdown, and a couple other, uh, Powerpuff Girls, Dexter's Lab, they all had one episode that was like creepy and scary. Yeah. Um, so like Powerpuff Girls, they go into the future and there's like a like, hundred years where the town wasn't saved by them and they were yes, all... Yes, I remember that yeah. one. I did like the Powerpuff Girls. And so like Samurai Jack was one that stuck out to me because it was so different to a lot of shows that I had been watching. There was a lot mm -hmm. more um, silence. There was a lot more... It was more art than plot and it's definitely so, so different to a lot of shows that I'm seeing coming out today where it's just constant... Um, stimulus, constant jokes, right. constant random, constant. and yeah. there's a lot more meaningful, and that really mm -hmm. stuck with me. Wow. And, and you were able, because when I was watching it now, I'm like, no wonder I didn't watch this, because as a child, I don't think I had the attention span for it. Yeah. But you obviously did, and you saw that it was so different than other shows, and you were um, excited to watch it. Yeah. So when I first started watching, and... Um, and this was just a few weeks ago that you started again. Yeah, yeah. yes. Uh, I only started watching a few weeks ago. And I was trying to binge it as much as possible. <laughs> but 
um, I like, you know, our time to record was coming up closer and closer now. And, and I was only like into season two. So I had to just skip to season five. Yeah. Um, for people who haven't watched Samurai Jack mm-hmm. there, there was like four seasons of stuff that aired on TV and then it just kind of ended similar to Invader Zim. And then just like a few months ago, they released a new, new season. So this is like new Samurai Jack just yes. came out. Yeah. And that aired on Adult Swim. Um, and the first seasons were like early 2000s. Yeah, like 2001 and onward. Yeah, yeah. So it's really cool. And it's a really good reboot too, mm. um, looking at the differences. But yeah, when I first started watching, um, I, and I was expecting because I have to like binge watch a show. And I, I know how to binge watch a show. I do that a lot. Yep. <laughs> and I was like, great. I'll just have this on while I'm doing the dishes while I'm cleaning up, while I'm getting all my other work done and art stuff done, I'll just watch this show. Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot watch the show while doing other things. <laughs> you have to be focused. Because <laughs> the whole, even the whole first episode, like I, I think I had something else beside me, like I needed to get it done, but I didn't touch it because I was just like... It's so it visually like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the whole the whole opening sequence of the first episode, there's no dialogue. There's barely any characters. I mean, the majority of the first episode, no one talks because, yeah. I mean, there's like, there's an eclipse and then a coup comes out and he's like back and then he attacks the city and then Jack leaves. And for this huge long montage, no one says anything. Yeah. And like, so the whole first episode, there's barely any dialogue and there's this mm-hmm. beautiful storytelling aspect of just just what you what you glean from watching and you know watching him grow and watching him become the man and the samurai that he is yeah. uh, all in the first episode it's so good i love this i mean throughout the series it's just really really good at yeah the visual storytelling definitely was surprised by the lack of dialogue yeah. and i've said this before on the podcast i'm going to say it a million more times but i love when um, animators can tell a really good story without a lot of dialogue. Absolutely. And this is like the pinnacle of that. And I was just blown away. I was completely floored. And the first episode two, just even that first sequence of Aku. Yeah. That was so creepy. Yeah. (laughs) And I was like, they really establish uh, Aku as a good villain. And... Like, he's just coming out of the ground. It's absolutely crazy. Yeah. And the whole time I was watching the first few episodes, I was just like, what? 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 What am I watching? Like, what is this show? I think that's what I was saying to myself throughout watching. I was like, what is this? How how, (laughs) how have I never seen this before? It's like, it is. It's just completely different from from anything else. And the way that, um, I mean, there's a lot of similarities between Samurai Jack and a lot of shows that were on at the same time. Like I mentioned, Dexter's Lab and Powerpuff Girls. Mm -hmm. They used a lot of the same sound effects, um, similar uh, facial features. Um, The animation style itself was kind of similar. Um, But one thing I think that set Samurai Jack apart from those other shows was these huge sweeping landscapes and the scale of everything and the fact that the backdrops were... They were never perfect, and that was really cool. Like especially the forest scenes, the trees are very abstract. And yes, everything is very stylized. Yeah, yes, yes, stylized. That's a good word. But just absolutely gorgeous to watch. Um, and then layered on top of that, fantastic voice acting. Oh, absolutely. Um, I mean, Aku is voiced by Mako, who also voices Uncle Iroh in Avatar: The Last Airbender. Yeah, I noticed that immediately. Yeah. I was like, oh yes. Which was definitely like a sad. Thing because in the new season five that just recently came out, um, Aku was voiced by the same voice actor who took over for Uncle Iroh in the later seasons of Avatar The Last Airbender. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was a little bit of that same nostalgia, um, but it was still good. And then um, Phil Lamar voices Jack. Yeah. And he also voices, a, he is a slew of other characters. He voices yeah, he voice? Static Shock. He voices. Um, uh, Green Lantern in the oh. old Avengers stuff. Yeah. He he's on uh, Futurama. He actually was in Pulp Fiction. Um, oh. He was Marvin, and he was a super <laughs> like in the, in the opening sequence when John Travolta and um, Samuel Jackson are in the room, and you know uh, say what again and all that. Marvy is like in the background, like cowering by the door, mm-hmm. and that's him. That's Phil Lamar. Oh my gosh, um, that's so cool. 
But yeah, uh, phenomenal voice acting. And the plot was so weird. <laughs> the plot is so weird. Oh my goodness. Yeah, every episode is just a whole... It's like self-contained. Yeah, it, it is very... You can just jump in. Yeah, to, pretty much. Uh, to any episode. After episode one. Well, after episode two. I feel like you could jump in anywhere because, yeah, the first three are kind of the intro. The yeah. first three episodes um, help you establish uh, where he's come from and everything. But the beginning theme, for lack of a better word, is basically Aku telling the story of how Samurai Jack... It, it, it's very... Everything's very basic. There's the clearly evil person, Aku. Who, whose name literally translates to evil. Oh Aku gosh, is really? literally evil in uh, Japanese. Uh, that's awesome. <laughs> that makes so much sense, though. <laughs> because Aku, he, he is not... I mean, he is evil. That is... He's evil very incarnate, clear. yeah. Yes. It's the very, like... What does he say? He's like, the darkness, like the... Leader of darkness, or uh, something like that. A shape shifting master of darkness. Master yes. of darkness, yes. Yes. And, and his legion of robots, for some right. reason. Well, I mean, robots are better than like killing actual people. And uh, yes, yes. We'll get to yeah. that in season five, too. But um, yeah, it's everything is very clear and um, simple. It's the evil, the very pure evil, and there's like, you know, there's no redemption, anything. It's just clear, like good, evil. Yeah. Um, and the samurai is the good. Um, and even color of black versus, you know, yeah. uh, like the, the, the black, the dark, the ink, the evil, you know, all of that. And Samurai Jack is, is pure and his, his mm -hmm. robe and everything else. And mm -hmm. his, his pure white robe. I and love his, his blessed, <laughs> like, sword and everything. Yes. I, I, I always just love his sandals. That yes. love everything he's wearing, those sandals. <laughs> uh, it, remind, it reminds me of, like, Steven Universe, too. I'm like, why are you wearing sandals this whole yes. time? <laughs> like, what's going on? Um, There's an episode all about that, too. Oh, in Samurai Jack. Yeah, where he oh, where really? one of his sandals breaks, mm -hmm. and he tries on like fifty different types of shoes. Oh he tries on like basketball shoes and runners and high <laughs> heels, and like none of them come close to his sandals. He needs his sandals, and he inevitably goes back to those. <laughs> Good, because those are like his sandals, right? Um, yeah, and, and his super objective is just to defeat a coup. That's it. Like, because right. that's basically his whole life. It's been leading up to you have to do, destroy a, a coup because right. he had like uh, his peaceful time with his parents, I suppose. But then, yeah, but then he was training just for that. Right. Yeah. I mean, the, like the basic plot of the show is he um, a coup shows up out of nowhere. Uh, ancient Japan um, takes over, and then uh, Samurai Jack grows up learning the skills to try and defeat him. And then he is thrown into the future through a portal. Mm -hmm. um, and the rest of the show takes place in that future. And so Jack's super objective is to find a way to get back to his own time and undo that future and defeat a coup yes. before all this happens. Mm -hmm. And so like you were saying, every episode is kind of a self-contained journey where he tries to find the next way to get home. Maybe there's a portal exactly. or a crystal or a spell or mm -hmm. something. Um, but each each episode kind of follows uh, one of those things, and inevitably he doesn't. Um, but I mean, it's a show; so you got to keep going. Right, exactly. <laughs> so, it, I I'm also amazed, and I think you said this before, just about the design of everything. Yeah. And because he, Samurai Jack is in a different location every single episode. Yeah. And just having to keep up with all of that design work and mm -hmm. um, artistry and the designs of the all of the sets, but also designs of the characters and everything that they're interacting with. They It's mind-boggling how much they had to put together for every single episode because right. they never are in the same place. And I almost wonder if that was useful because I, I remember very vividly there was an episode that took place in kind of a, a Middle Eastern style area. Mm. Um, and I feel like a lot of the character design comes from the environment. So I feel like they've mm -hmm. got to start with the environment and then yeah. everything kind of comes from that Definitely. because like, like there was the episode where he like joined the mob and he got a suit <laughs> yes. and like they were all little gangsters. And so everything was very like 1920s and the music was like, yes. you know, <laughs> um, everything with its own little like futuristic twist. Yeah. Very fun. Um, but I feel like a lot of that. 
uh, I feel like that would be so fun and so difficult as an animator to to be able to come up with all of that yeah. on a given week. Yeah, I could I could only imagine yeah how cha- both challenging and super fun it would be because they really it really the premise just blows my mind because they have so much freedom. It's right. this. Watching it from the beginning, I didn't really expect the future part to happen. Yeah, and, right. And then all of a sudden, you're in the future, like and, ancient samurai <laughs> in far flung future. Yeah, like what a genius idea! It's so different, and it does give them so much freedom in that futuristic aspect because they can make that future whatever they want. Like right. at one point, there's the episode that there are like these woolly mammoth type things that are yeah, being controlled they, by like these weird space monkeys. Yeah, <laughs> like it's so random, but. It's so good. And like ev- like every uh, every episode he kind of finds or he happens upon some new like mini civilization or new like race or or group mm-hmm. that is somehow affected by Aku and yeah. inevitably he sacrifices his own journey in order to help the downtrodden and mm-hmm. there's the one episode in particular where there's a group of people who are um uh building a spaceship and they're yeah. trying to get to a wormhole, and potentially he could use that to get home. But in the end, he sac- he like jumps off and uh, sacrifices his chance to go back home to make sure that they leave safely. Right, and that happens over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. And part of me is like, okay, well, if you just go back in time, this won't happen to begin so with. So you won't have to, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But it's like his noble heart. Yeah, and also his hubris. But oh, there's so-, so many good characters like there's Mm -hmm. there's a bunch of episodes that stand out to me uh one of them with the scotsman yes um (laughs) because the whole like the first 15 to 20 minutes is just nothing he's just walking they're just walking on the bridge and yeah the bridge there's this huge expanse but just it's just a rope bridge with like room for one person yeah. and eventually you hear bagpipes and this like Scotsman wearing a kilt playing bagpipes and he's got a machine gun for a leg because of course he does <laughs> and then they have an argument and then they get handcuffed together because of course they do of course. and then they both get hunted by bounty hunters because of course they do oh my gosh again just so much freedom with the the story and design and everything it, it makes for a, some really really great episodes yeah. some really really great circumstances to put Jack in. Yeah. And um, that that <laughs> that Scottish character is just so <laughs> well done. Like it's such a strong standalone character. You yeah. like immediately his personality and um, the voice and everything is just so well done. You, did you did you see the episode with the blind archers? Yes. That Ooh, one that in particular, good. if you wanted to watch an episode about um, silent storytelling like that yeah. one in particular is phenomenal mm-hmm. um it's gorgeous to watch there's not a lot of dialogue because for the, the majority of the episode is jack trying to get to a tower that's guarded by these three like master archers mm-hmm. um and so there's no dialogue between them it's all very much visual and sound um but it's it's a phenomenal story even like captured in that that one little like 25 half hour time bracket yeah very little is said that whole time um yeah because yeah they just uh, throughout the whole show but that's a really good example they just really take their time establishing what's there you know he like there's that whole sequence he's trying to get closer to the tower but um the arrows keep hitting him and so eventually he's like just putting like his toe down and it, you know or yeah. or his hat or whatever and you re- you realize as the audience and samurai jack realizes it too that it's like their sound the sound right. of they're not the, seeing the snow him. Or, they're yeah mm-hmm. I, I don't know was it the snow was that in the snow it was yeah there was yeah. a lot of snow yeah um, so they could hear it because then he had to he had to um level himself to be the same, or he had to bring himself to the same level as the archers, and so he meditated in the woods with a blindfold on yes. until he could like heighten his hearing to the mm-hmm. point where he could hear like deer scraping in the snow or like right. birds on branches. And then there were ridiculous episodes, uh, of course, because it was Cartoon Network. But there were some really serious ones. Like there was one where mm-hmm. um, he had to fight his own anger. Oh. Um, and so Aku created this doppelganger of himself. Yeah, I remember that. And uh, he just gets more and more frustrated, but he realizes that like the more angry he gets, 
the stronger his doppelganger becomes and he realizes he has to accept his anger Mm -hmm. um, and that's the only way to overcome it. And there's like... There's a bunch of episodes like the the haunted house one that I that was talking about, um, super scary. But there's a little girl that like leads him to this mansion, and over the course of the episode, he uncovers like the sadness and the loss that happened there. But it's also really freaky what happens. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm like, this is a kid show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, even from the beginning, I'm like, oh, this is scary for a kid. But um, I, yeah, I think it's really great that they do touch on some more serious things. While also having some really fun, yeah. silly episodes too. Because I think that's an important thing about kids shows, and, and, and something that I like when I see it is that kids aren't dumb, no, and yeah. kids need to learn learn the same lessons and hear the same stories as mm-hmm. adults, just told in a different way. And I think it's really uh, it it shows the caliber of a storyteller and an animator and a voice actor, and and all the things that go into creating is when you're able to make a story with layers that can be watched at multiple points in someone's life and you can get the same thing and also different things from it. Yes. Um, Because like kids can understand loss and they can understand struggle and they can understand victory and defeat Mm -hmm. and they can understand those concepts um, as long as they're put into words that they know, you know? Right. Yeah. One of the, one of the thing that I thought was interesting about Samurai Jack was, uh, Similar to other shows in that area or that era, like Powerpuff Girls, like mm-hmm. Dexter's Lab, there was blood in them. Like there was blood in kids shows. Yeah, and that's like not a thing anymore. No. Um, and so that was a big no. deal. Yeah. I mean, much more so in Samurai Jack. There was a lot of oil. Uh, <laughs> right, because he's always fighting the robots. Right. And so the oil is the representation of right. blood. But even like, yeah, I remember he was like on he one of would the first get episodes. hurt. Yeah, yeah, you could see like a red mark on him be from you know a cut or whatnot. yeah and i'm like like you don't see blood and i don't think it's allowed oh no um which is also why the new season aired on adult swim and not cartoon network right because there i realized that i mean there were some things in the new season i was like yeah this is definitely adult but i mean there were few and far between i feel like and for the most part it because i was going in and i was like man, this is, must be really different because it's on Adult Swim. But right. it wasn't really no. at all. Like, um, uh, obviously you could tell the years had gone by and animation was... Uh, Slightly uh, up- improved. upgraded. Improved, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it still had the same style. It still... I was very impressed that it kept, mo- like, the same feel, the same yeah. um, pacing. This Everything felt very, very similar. And it was really well done. It definitely felt like no time had passed between yeah. the seasons. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And that's just phenomenal because um, going back to that for them, I'm sure, I, you know, maybe they're just so, you know, it was so ingrained in yeah. their writing and they can just go straight back to it. But, um, and that they only had 10 episodes for the, that last season. Yeah, and they, a lot they did happened. a lot in 10 25 minute episodes or 22 minute episodes. Yeah. And that's really, really cool. What's interesting is also something between the the original seasons and the newest season. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jack has only ever had one other female companion, um, which ended up be, actually being, being Aku. Aku. <laughs> <laughs> so really, he's only had, well, well, but also the same. I mean, that's a parallel because, yeah. like, in the new season as well, What's like name? Ashi, Ashi Ashi is like of Aku, you know? Yes. Um, wow. So that's interesting. Wow, this, yeah, this new season is so good. I'm just, my mind is blown. I love that at the beginning, he really is struggling internally because for him, it's been 50 years, but he hasn't aged. And right. he still can't succeed his yeah. his goal. I mean, you, you go from the, the first few seasons of somebody who is so unflinching in their yes. task and who is so forward and and um uh that just has so much drive to mm-hmm. to succeed and the beginning of the new season he's just de- he's just defeated he's yeah, just hurt he's, he's down mm-hmm. and i mean part of that is in the original season he's got his sword which yeah. is it was blessed by monks from the sky and he was able to defeat a coup or something but it's the only weapon that can hurt a coup mm-hmm. uh the big twist being in the new season, he lost his sword. Yeah. Um, but Aku doesn't know that. Mm-hmm. So he's kind of on the run. 
um, from himself as well as a coup because he can't defeat him in his the, the way he is. He doesn't have his sword. He doesn't have his weapon. Yeah. So he feels like he's just lost. Mm -hmm. And it's really, really interesting to see like the samurai who was for so long like the guiding force for many being the one who needs guidance. Yes. And Ashi comes um, as kind of, yeah, this weird guidance. And when I was watching it, I was like, because she, you know, is basically born and bred to defeat him. Yeah, she's and, been brainwashed that he's evil. Yeah, completely brain, brainwashed. And her beginning to, like, her, while she's trying to um, try to understand uh, the world from his perspective and and her fresh eyes on everything is that like excitement and is that drive that he once had yeah and it was really interesting seeing them butt heads because um yes jack is just so defeated and um you know he's battling with himself in his mind that you know he can't do it anymore and uh, she's there. I mean, like everything is amazing. <laughs> yeah, but also like on top of on top of Jack's, like, like he can't do it anymore. But he also can't live with the guilt of not because all right. all he can think about is the fact that he's leaving all of those people, like his family, to mm -hmm. suffer for all of those years while he was being transported through time. Right. And so if he doesn't go back, then he's just basically forsaking his people and his mm -hmm. friends and his family. Um, so super complex. Yes. I really like in the new season, I mean, throughout the whole series, their use of color is really, really yeah. good. And you mentioned the, you know, Aku is black and Samurai Jack has his white robe. Yeah. It's a very, it's a very obvious opposite. Yes. Yes. And I don't remember which episode it was in the new season, but um, it's after he his first battle with all of the sisters yeah i just refer to them as the furies i don't the know the furies why, but okay well I'm... we will regard them as the furies okay the just, sisters yeah. ashi's sisters and fellow fighters yeah assassins cultists they're, they're assassins. i don't know <laughs> i don't know <laughs> cultists. yeah kind of kind of <laughs> pretty much um but he just had his first fight with them and he um just killed one of them and that's like a whole other thing it's like he didn't yeah, never kill anybody never killed a person, person yeah he's only killed robots. robots but never a person and that was like whew, yeah yeah well but going back to color he like gets he's like completely beaten up and torn up and um it has a big like stomach wound and um he's getting out of the river and it's like dark and like these blacks and these dark blues and then his the blood on his body is just super, super bright, bright red. red. Yeah. And it is so cool. That whole scene. And Oh my goodness. And then the entire <laughs> sequence when they're, um, chasing him through the temple and there's light and then there's darkness. And yes. And they like slip into the shadows. Yeah. And in that same way that harkens back to, there was an episode in the, um, the earlier seasons where mm -hmm. Jack was, uh, in a similar way being hunted by an assassin. Um, but the way that it was stylized in the episode, uh, light and shadow and light mm -hmm. and darkness were completely stark and monochrome. So it starts out there in this kind of temple and, uh, the sun is setting. And so instead of getting these very vibrant oranges and blues, mm -hmm. it's just white. There is white where the light is and there's black where the light is not. Mm -hmm. And so this assassin kind of slips into the shadows and becomes completely invisible and Jack is, you know, dressed in his all white uh, robe, mm -hmm. but he wraps some of the robe around his head then as well. So his entire body is covered in white. So in the shadows, he glows like a light, but he can't see his attacker. So mm -hmm. he moves into the light and becomes invisible. And so it's then this waiting game of uh, who steps out first. And that's Jack's original plan. But the sun is setting, and the amount of light he has oh. is decreasing. So the longer it takes for this battle to finish, the more advantage his uh, opponent has. Yes. Um, so that was a really cool episode. Yeah, that's really, really great. And just what they do with silhouettes like that. Yeah. And their art is, like, so lineless. Like, um, like the characters... 
there, I mean, it's very stark, but there aren't actually, like, outlines mm. as you would see in, like, you know, Powerpuff Girls or Dexter's Laboratory or something. Yeah. And I really, really love that because that's something um, that I don't see a lot in yeah. that, like, you Like know, that pencil drawn style. Early 2000s. Yeah. Um, so I liked that about the art as well. And just every time... I loved every time they did like zoom into Jack's eyes. Yes. <laughs> every episode. Or the fact that it would take like two straight minutes for him to finish a yell where he'd be like, ah, and then they would show it from like 10 different angles. And right. Then, whoosh, 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 and yes. Finally, oh. he would get the swing in. <laughs> they did a really good job of doing that, like that comic book style, like. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, like he's you're going like in leaping for a big through the air. blow, or yeah, and is just like the screen cuts into a whole bunch of different pieces, and you see the different angles, or it, it zooms in for every time, or something like that. Or they'll show like the the army of like bug robots shows up, and then there's just like. 30 straight seconds of where they're all standing up and unpacking and you're just like, okay, okay. okay. Uh -huh. Oh, oh, all right. Uh-huh. Okay. More robots. Okay. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Again, with that pacing, it's just crazy how effective it is because they'll take so much time to do something like that, to establish something. Mm -hmm. But it, it surprised me that I wasn't less interested. It, 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 had the opposite effect of really, really drawing me in. Yeah. Because I was like, what is going on? And because there's no, there's like really good sound effects and music sometimes. Sometimes it's really nice and it like yeah. cut the music out. They're really good with their sound. And the natural sound effects of yeah. just like nature. Right. And then, um, yeah, you're just being drawn in by all the visuals. That as well. Like there was, there was an episode, I don't know if you had seen this one, uh, where... Um, it was the big molten uh, guy with the sword um, who was trapped in... Oh, the Viking guy? Yes. Yes. So that I episode that. in particular, um, it starts out and he's walking through these meadows and these lush green landscapes mm -hmm. and then the natural sounds of birds and wind kind of stop and yeah. he crunches down and there's this super defined line where this wasteland begins. Mm -hmm. Just this charred landscape expands ahead of him and it's it feels cold and it feels empty and yeah. and uh, drafty and the minute that he steps over that threshold the entire atmosphere and pacing and tone changes mm -hmm. you're on edge because you don't know why the world is like this and you don't know what's going to happen or who's right. going to jump out and for the rest of the episode you're kind of he's chasing this monster and by the end you realize that he's trapped that the, the monster itself has a as a curse and he's mm -hmm. he can't leave and it's why the land is like this and the whole uh, perception of everything kind of flops. But um, that was a really good uh, use of visuals and sound together to create. Yes. To really make that stark contrast that piques your interest yeah. and um, draws you in. That's a really good example. In the newer season, yeah. um, another part I really liked was um, before and during the fight with the Furies there's these parallels to this wolf and yeah. his like these other creatures attacking him because at the very it, it starts even with the wolf i yeah. think and you just see this wolf like going through the forest and then you see jack and they um they like jump cut back and forth between yeah. them and you kind of start to realize that they're implying like this is this is jack's spirit like yes like this is uh, representative of Jack and so you know the wolf will run into an obstacle and Jack will run into the same kind type of obstacle yeah. and then eventually um, when Jack is being attacked um, you also see the wolf being attacked by these creatures and that you didn't like they didn't need to do that yeah but adding that yeah made it so much deeper like it just created this whole other level to it because you're, it's almost like you're getting the story twice, but in different ways. Right. But it's, in different it's, levels. It's, in, it's immediately understandable because it's primal. It's nature. It's natural. Yes. 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 Oh my goodness. Also something you just made me realize about like the beginning of the new series. Mm -hmm. um, he doesn't have his sword. Right. But the first time you see Jack, he's on a motorcycle, mm -hmm. like clad in armor. He doesn't right. have 
a weapon anymore. He doesn't have right. his defense. He has so he like puts a gun armor and like a on. stick. But like the entire series, all he ever does, he wears his sandals, he wears his kimono, right. and he has his sword. He's very simple. He's just, he's mm-hmm. very um, measured. But in the new season, he comes in on a freaking Harley. Right. Like, he's got guns and machine guns and spikes and everything. Yeah. And he's clad in this armor mm-hmm. uh, in this protective coating yeah. um, that's very much not the Jack we knew because he's mm-hmm. changed and he's vulnerable. And so he yeah. surrounds himself with these deadly weapons and tools because he doesn't have his sword anymore. That's... And there's the exactly huge transition it. where, like, the the sisters come after him, mm-hmm. and he's stripped down to his base and bare skills, and um, he kind of, there's, like, that really big uh, moment where he, like, goes back and he puts his hair up, and, yeah. you know, and he's back in, back in Jackson. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes. Thank you for saying that, because when I was watching, when I first started watching the, the, that last season... Which, you know, was like yesterday. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I was like, wow, this, it didn't feel, it did feel wrong. It felt like this isn't Jack, what's going on? And you just described it. That's exactly it. Because I didn't really register in my brain, but yeah, it's that really stark difference, not only of his like mental state and how he was reacting to people, but just who he was and how he was designed and that's super intentional and super well done of um those working on the show yeah because it really immediately sets the tone and you don't even know it's jack at the very beginning right you just see this you see you know i this this dude yeah i just assumed oh some uh, other random futuristic crazy person (laughs) jack should be here any minute now (laughs) yeah yeah where's where's jack where's jack oh yeah yeah i don't remember because i had watched this a while ago the the horseman that kind of follows Jack around in the new season. Mm, yeah. Um, I don't remember. Was that ever established as um, like a physical being or was it something in Jack's mind? I feel like uh, people could go either way. I definitely saw the horseman as something in Jack's mind because it ultimately leads him to this weird kind of like desolate like almost a graveyard type place and you have these other ghosts or apparitions um surround him and they're all basically saying he needs to die and the horseman is the one kind of almost aiming to you know kill him but jack is also the one like raising his sword so i feel for me it was kind of this all those apparitions and the horseman were all in his mind, the voices in his head that he couldn't stop and he was going to commit suicide. Like the battle within himself. Yes. Mm-hmm. And Ashi had to get him out of there. Yeah. Because I definitely, I definitely think that like the two, um, the two parts of Jack were like obvious human self-preservation and like I, I think a, a part of him was still clinging to that goal of like trying to find some way to get home. Mm-hmm. But then a much bigger and scarier part of him was there's no way. Yeah. Like it's over. Mm-hmm. Um, and it took, it took somebody else who was more blind than he was yes. to make him re realize, um, like what, what life is about and what, um, where beauty is in the world and what's worth fighting for. Yes, absolutely. Yes, 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 yes. Like Ashi and her new, it's like her newfound freedom and her new fresh outlook on the world. That is what saves him because he's just stuck in this rut and he has no hope. Um, and she, having just come out of that, um, is able to you know, bring him along with her. Oh, it's so good. It's so Can, good. I, I'm gonna look up what Ashi's name means because now I'm like, if, Ak- <laughs> <laughs> if Aku means, um, you know, evil, I wonder. Right. Okay, so I got a lot of different things. <laughs> uh, this website it has like five million different meanings for Ashi, including evening, night, reward, smile, happy, peaceful, love, affection. I'm like, uh, it can't mean all of those things. Weird. This one, though, says Ashi, like looking in Japanese, is one of the <laughs> meanings is 
evil, so okay, that could that would make sense to me. Yeah, if it was evil, um, but then it also has like a meaning of like your foot. <laughs> 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 I'm like, ah, uh, I don't Obviously know. Obviously, it's that one. I don't know. Yeah, I'm gonna go with it. Also means evil. I don't know any Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not true. What do I know? I know enough anime. I have to know something. Because I thought I knew the word for thank you, but now I don't You, you do. I, it's I, ori- origato. Okay, so I was right. I yeah. thought I was, it was in my head, but I was like, oh, I don't know that's right anymore right now. Speaking of language, like it's kind of weird that very rarely does Jack ever meet anyone he can't understand. I know that, you know, the very first episode I was thinking about that. And then I just like dismissed it. <laughs> but <it's> such... <laughs> and I think as kids we all did. And it's like, right? Sure, everyone speaks English. I feel like with everything, there's there gets to a point where you have to just su- suspend your disbelief. Right. But that would definitely have been an issue because he has all he he encounters all these like cultural barriers and right. like he doesn't understand anything that's going on. Um, but he would have definitely encountered. Uh, language barriers too because well my wonder is like in the first episode when he goes through like all of his training he travels to like all corners of the globe to learn so I would assume he's probably like omnilingual um because he would know he would know English he would know uh German he would know like Turkish he would know um Arabic uh yeah different like Chinese as well as Japanese Mm -hmm. um so I mean he's got quite a few languages under his belt and I Maybe we're just supposed to imagine that, like, in, in Aku's future, everyone speaks English. <laughs> right. Like, that's the language. <laughs> right. Uh, but there are also, like, aliens and space characters. So, right. Yeah. But I, they're either minions of Aku or being oppressed by Aku. Like, he's, he's like, encapsulated. There's, there's no... I'm just kind of realizing this now, but there's, like, never anywhere that Jack goes that Aku isn't. Like, there's never anywhere in the universe he goes that is untouched by Aku's evil. Yeah. Which is weird. It, it... He has... Aku has the power. That he does. He's also really silly. Aku? Yeah. Yes! Oh my gosh, that's another thing I was thinking about too. I agree. Um, he's... It's weird that he is, like, this big, all-powerful evil, and he is also, like less serious than Jack most of the time. Yeah. Um, th- did you see the episode where he was telling kids stories? Yes. Oh, that's so great. He assembles the youth of the entire city <laughs> into this coliseum, uh, and he tries to tell all of these children's fables, like Goldilocks and the Three Bears, mm-hmm. but he changes out characters with Jack and tries to make him evil, but all the kids are like, nah, Jack's the best! And Aku's right. like, shut up, kid, no, he's not. And they're like, no, you shut up, because Jack's awesome. Yeah. And the kids end up like, booing a coup away and yeah. I think that's hysterical it's so funny because then, then he can't do anything because they're kids and he's just like well rah, and he leaves and I'm like that's hysterical <laughs> a like, coup so master of darkness defeated by a bunch of kids who don't like him <laughs> yeah it's amazing yeah. Uh, and then all the kids just tell their own story yeah. with um samurai and jack of course being the hero right of course so, as he should be as he should be yes in this newest season a coup has some really, really funny moments. Like, right from the beginning, the first time you see him in the fifth season, he's just, like, getting out of bed. And so he, like, he he pulls open a drawer and, like, gets his eyebrows and, like, puts his yes! eyebrows on. <laughs> and it's so funny when, like, Jack is all dark and depressed and, like, fighting these internal demons. And then Haku is And then Haku is, like, is, like, going to himself for therapy. <laughs> he's, yes! like, he's on, like, a like a chaise lounge. Like, oh, I just, like, I have no, like, meaning in life because I don't have to, like, constantly... I'm, like, I won. Like, it's boring. I don't know. <laughs> right. And I, the way Aku moves, because he's a shapeshifter, and that scene especially, because I remember, like... Uh, He's, you know, giving himself therapy, and he's, like, on the couch. And as he continues to delve deeper into his trou- troubles, he, like, shrinks down, like, <laughs> into the couch. And it's so funny. I love um, what they can do with him because he is a shapeshifter. Yeah. He can move however they want. Because, like, when he's fighting, he becomes these animals and these, like, manifestations of of <laughs> badness and evil, mm-hmm. like scorpions and bats and spiders yeah. and an octopus. Uh, also, I guess, 
and a goat, guess. that too. But um, <laughs> anything he wants. Yeah, but he, but but also because of that, he's a very he's a very liquid individual. So he'll sometimes be a puddle, or he'll sometimes <laughs> be uh, like a solid pillar, and he'll just like levitate in any direction to move places and his size can grow and shrink to massive or minuscule sizes and, yes or he can become a woman as well i guess right uh, which yeah. was weird that was weird that was a weird episode and the end let's talk about ashi again okay <laughs> because because ashi has part of aku in her um she's able to be controlled by aku mm-hmm. and so that's ultimately like the one of the biggest battles at the end is Jack can't kill Ashi because he loves her. Right. But she is being controlled by a coup and it takes her a really long time to like battle her way out of that like in her mind. Yeah. And um, you know I feel like you know I, you see that in a lot of stories like the either hypnotizing or some way of like turning the good people against you. Yeah. Um, and I, re- I, I always like that dynamic. I know it's used a lot, but I think it's because but I think it it's works because it's, well. Yeah, it's effective. Exactly. And because, like, as it's already been established in that season, Jack will not kill an innocent. Right. So Ashi is innocent even though she is doing these things because she doesn't right. have control. And I think uh, two things there. I think the dynamic of fighting the people we love is something that everyone can relate to because obviously we're not, like... We're not fighting to the death with people we love, but we're constantly like in conflict with our friends and our family and the people around us. We never, we don't always agree, but it it's always a struggle and it's always it always hurts to mm-hmm. uh, go against the people we care about. Yeah. Um, also, that thing about uh, Jack not killing an innocent, um, he he views like he's got this whole like innocent until proven guilty thing about everything. Mm -hmm. And so especially even Ashi who is literally part Aku, she's part (laughs) evil and is being controlled by Aku for the sole purpose of killing him. He still, um, wants to save her because she is innocent. She is, um, good. Even if, she's not allowed to be or even if she's being forced not to be is that he sees right. through that and sees who she is underneath the evil unlike the yeah. kazoo guy kazoo guy the, the flute playing jazz guy who was really irritating and I oh wish, my gosh so irritating and i just oh. wish he wasn't in the season but he was in it so much he was because he, he was the one Going to trying to get his, burr, burr, burr. Get, getting trying to get to a coup and tell him that uh, Jack doesn't have a sword, <laughs> and I was just like, "Why are you this so useless? This uh, uh, this character? Oh my goodness!" And it, I mean, I guess it was kind of like a break from Jack's mental anguish. Yeah, uh, I guess to have this ridiculous character. I suppose. Bob around and try to get Taku. I forget. In the new season, was there um, there was a character who had kind of like sharp teeth. He was kind of like Aku, but he um, he had like multiple warriors powers within him. Um, I feel like he made an appearance in the new season, but in like the older season, he was an enemy that Jack defeated, and every mm-hmm. hero that this. Uh, eat bad guy defeated he would absorb his power and become stronger oh. um, and I think he came back for like a real quick joke where he was like there for a second and then was immediately like defeated or just downtrodden or something like that I don't remember exactly but I think he showed up again and that always oh. cracks me up that's definitely possible but I probably didn't register it because I didn't see the original yeah. episode with him or like um, how the Scotsman shows back up in the new season yes. and is like immediately killed and then like comes back as a ghost. <laughs> it's just like... I love it. <laughs> I mean, with this show, yeah, they just have such an imagination. Like, there are no rules like yeah. for the creation of these episodes, and they just do a great job with it. <laughs> Which is a weird thing to say because you, I feel like you have to have rules but i feel like the rules are different as to the ones that we normally expect like like right. the, like the rules are um like a ku can shapeshift and he can mm-hmm. do all this other stuff but the sword can kill him right and a ku is evil jack is good like it's right. very they're very black few, and white <laughs> it's very black and white they have very few rules they're simple rules but 
It's, um, it's enough. That's all they yeah. need. But then, like, at, be, the new season allowed us to take this just giant future landscape and extend it even further and be like, it's been 50 years. So yeah. another rule that we've established is Jack can't die by normal means. Right. Like, he doesn't age. And, mm-hmm. like, the mental toll that that takes on somebody is huge. Yeah. yeah. Um, other rules, everybody knows who Jack is. <laughs> like, yes. Yeah, <laughs> like at Everyone point, knows everyone Jack. Everyone knows. He's, like, a legend and a yeah. hero and a myth almost. Yeah. And he, it's really sad because there's one episode where Ashi is trying to find Jack and she keeps running into all these people who that, he has yeah. helped before. And they're all like, you know. The rave was my favorite. Yes. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. And then she starts dancing with them and like, oh, that's so funny. Well, it's almost like Jack's first uh, first encounter in the future was at a rave. Yeah. And he was like, what is going yeah. on? Like all the dancers. <laughs> this music and... hurts. Yeah. <laughs> I felt so bad for him. Um, so Ashi is, um, yeah, in- encountering all these people who are so thankful. Yeah. Like Jack. learning about Jack through the people he yeah. saved. And that's so great. And just shows you the world where it's at, at that moment. Um, and that Jack can't see that. He can't see how impactful he has been. Yeah. And that's such a typical good guy thing because like of like, it's not important to stick around and see the aftermath. It's not important to see the good that I've done. It is only important because it is good. Like it's only these people are worth saving because they are people Mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter whether I'm thanked. It doesn't matter whether I like I stick around for the aftermath. It's a very like, um, like Lone Ranger type yes. deal. I yeah. mean he's he's a I mean he's a ronin, he's a traveling like a wandering mm-hmm. um samurai and he literally just drifts and does what he does, you know. Right. It, it doesn't matter um it it doesn't matter what happens to him because he's doing it because it needs to be done, you know. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So the ending. Yes. <laughs> I <sighs> Okay, I I love Ashi so much, and they finally realize, oh, Aku's powers are in her. She can bring them back to the past, and they do. And Jack defeats Aku, and everything is great. And um, they're gonna get they're gonna married. get married, and then and it's uh. this beautiful sequence too because it's all these like pink hues, and she's like, and all the people who trained Jack are there, yeah. and his parents are still alive, oh, and he's finally like, back in his own time, and everything uh. is great. And then Ashi disappears, like actually disappears, actually just but disappears. not before touching Jack's face and just being in his arms, and then just. <laughs> <sighs> it's so sad. It's so sad, and as. As everything was happening, the whole season, I, you know, not the whole season, but after it's very, uh, like, it's established that Ashi and Jack are made for each other and are great. And then it's like, yes, uh, uh, this whole time I was like, oh no, he has to go to the past. Like, that's his goal. If he goes to the past, he'll leave Ashi behind and it'll be sad. But then, because Ashi had the power, she could bring them both to, to the past. And I was like, yes! Um, we fixed that problem and now they're both in the past together and it's great. But then it's like, oh wait, without a coup, she, you know, she wouldn't have existed. And so, do you want me to add to your, do you want me to add to your devastation? Great. When you, when you had said that they were made for each other, Ashi was made for Jack. Ah! Um, and I almost wonder (laughs) if like. Ashi disappearing after Aku was defeated was his last like stab at Jack was his last oh. like like twisting the knife of oh. like yeah you get what you want but you don't oh it hurts it hurts it hurts ah oh my gosh that's so good I can't Oh my gosh. And because you get all this time with them they are so freaking cute <laughs> <laughs> because Jack is like you know you've had seasons of him being just super BA and awesome and, and, and just like I don't know and then all of a sudden he's like this uh, schoolboy and like yes. super awkward around her and <laughs> yes <laughs> the one episode when they're in uh, the like prison and that's kind of that leads up to their first kiss basically yeah. and that whole thing is just hilarious because she you know is like been raised and literally all she's ever done is fight yeah and so she doesn't 
really get it, but, you know, is also, like, attractive to him. But he's the one who's, like, super awkward about, like, being too close to her or, like, touching her. <laughs> <laughs> like, like uh, even before they get to the prison, I think it was before, yeah, they're, like, in some weird transportation thing and they have to fight these guys. And um, while they're fighting, they, like, are helping each other, like, using each other's momentum but, and, like and, like, holding hands or like he's grabbing her waist and yeah. there's this like weird pause. It's a of, very like... obvious moment and they like make a very big show of like the contact uh, that happens. So you get this, uh, yeah, and you just get that, those great funny moments and like you get to see their whole story together and so it just really, it really hurts at the end when yep. Ashi can't be there. But I'm kind of glad that Ashi isn't there at the end because then it would be too good of an ending. I don't think it would it would have been too fairy tale indeed for this show. It's also very iconic of of Jack's life because mm-hmm. I mean like we were talking about earlier his goal is to go back and in every episode he is he is fueled by helping others and oftentimes he gives up what he wants most in order to reach or in, or in order to help other people. Yeah. And so in that same way even though he achieves this goal, he mm-hmm. still suffers and has to give up what he wants most yeah. in order to achieve that goal, you know? It's like, Ashi becomes his super objective, you know, and... Um, the only thing that's... Uh, yeah. Like, he has to choose, almost. It's kind of like, because he couldn't defeat Aku without having to give her up. Right. <sighs> Visually, fantastic. Story is phenomenal. Something there for everybody. Yes. Um, the plot gets a little weird because uh, there kind of isn't plot towards the end of the, the earlier seasons because there wasn't really a clear direction as to where it was going. Mm-hmm. But they definitely focus down and get back on track for season five. I definitely found myself... There was one episode where uh, I was like, what? 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 What is happening? What's going on? Where is this all leading to? Mm-hmm. Oh, he's fighting... It was this, this dragon, of course. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> um... But that I yeah I fantastic phenomenal show. Yes, thank you for um, suggesting it. Honestly, yeah. I, I am blown away by how good this show is, and I'm glad that I finally watched it. Yeah, I'm glad that we talked about it because I'm definitely like finding more about it even now. Like as we're just kind of spitballing. Exactly. Yeah, and that's my favorite thing is just like being able to engage with other people, and you really do get to. Um, recognize new things because everyone's viewing it through a different lens right and so you really get to understand what other people are taking out of it and you know even just uh re-watching things or you know you're always getting new things from yeah from that content so yeah yeah man it's just such a good show <laughs> all right um what have you been watching recently um I have been watching uh, two shows on Netflix. One of them is called The Good Place, Ah. which is hysterical. Yes. Uh, Premise of the story is uh, this girl makes it into heaven, and she's not supposed to be there, but nobody knows except her. (laughs) Um, And the other one is um, Norseman. It is called Norseman. Is that on Netflix, too? Yes. Um, It is based in, like, Viking Age Norway and Sweden. Yay. Um, but uh, everyone talks and acts like a modern day person. Um, yes. So it's like Vikings, ah! uh, but and they all have like really thick like Norwegian accents, but uh, they're all like passive aggressive and. <laughs> but yeah, those two, and then I'm also rewatching um, a bunch of old shows that I watch. Like if you if you really want to sit down and watch like. Oh, um, a really good, dark, deep story. Um, watch Future Diary. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness, that that anime is phenomenal. Or yeah. something visually amazing. Watch Mononoke. Not Princess Mononoke because that's different. Yes. But yes. But just Mononoke. It's yeah. only a few episodes long. You told me about that one. For yeah. Sure. It's I definitely so need to different. Check it out. Yeah. If you've seen Chowder, you know how like um, on Cartoon Network how like when they move, it's like the textures of their clothing stay still. And so as they move, their clothing moves over the textures. Yeah. They do a lot of that in Mononoke. Cool. Yeah. yeah, I'll have to check that out. That's what I've been watching. Cool. I just finished 
watching season three of the Seven Deadly Sins on Netflix because the season three. Oh came. yeah. And I, that's definitely one of those shows that it's like just too anime, like <laughs> <laughs> the humor and like you know they're big fighting sequences, like. But I love it so much, and I love the. It's one of those animes that I just love the characters so much, and I'm really attached to them, and I. I've got like four that it. people have recommended to me. That one, My mm-hmm. Hero Academia. Thank you, Jake, Thank for you. talking about Samurai Jack with me. Yes. We'll see you on the podcast again soon, I hope. I don't know how you're going to do that. How are you going to see us? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Hear us. <laughs> Unless you have magical powers, can, yes. can see through your ear. If you can, you'd be really bored. If you can watch the watch us right now, we're just sitting on the floor talking into a microphone. Yeah. Nothing exciting. A lot of looking stuff up. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We've taken many breaks this this time looking yes. looking things up. That's fine. I I never know. <laughs> Every time I'm like, how do I end these? Yeah. I. Yep. Yeah. So uh, thanks. All right. Okay. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. Yes! Thank you so much for listening. Let us know your thoughts on Samurai Jack or any of your other favorite animated media on Facebook, Instagram, and Tumblr at Fanimated Podcast. You can also email us at fanimatedpodcast at gmail.com. The art for this podcast is done by me, Kelly Anderson. You can find me on Tumblr and Instagram at kelbell312. The music is provided by the folks at Purple Planet, and a huge thank you to Jake Annis for recommending Samurai Jack to me. If you want to hear more from Jake, make sure to check out his other podcasts, Pen Sword and Night's Quest. Thanks again for listening, and if you want to support the show further, consider leaving us a rating and review. It really helps new people find the show. Until next week, stay tuned and stay animated. Stay animated.